Hello again and welcome. This is just going to be a real quick test that I'd like to run. On my left, this is a solenoid driver. This pink wire here is going off to my signal generator. The other leg going off into the oscilloscope. The signal generator is putting out a pulse and that's turning on this driver. You can see I have two resistors of two different sizes. One's a 220 ohm. The other one is a 12 ohm and they're attached by these two outside pieces of wire and then their center conductors are attached here. You can see these are in very close proximity to one another. Basically I'm just trying to control the loops through this. And then the output of the coax right now is just going to these two 10x scope probes and you can see I've basically minimized my ground loops here. This is not an ideal setup. Over here again we have our oscilloscope. So looking at the oscilloscope you can see I have two displays active. In the top two traces, the yellow here, this is the pulse coming out of the signal generator. The blue is the current that's going through the coil. So as I turn on my driver, you can see the current starts going up linearly as we charge the coil. The other two traces here, which are laid on top of each other right now. If I just display this as a quad, we're looking at the green trace here and the red trace. Like to make this a little easier to look at, I'm just gonna turn off the current as well as the voltage pulse. And now let's uh, go to a single display. And again, this is our two traces. Let's just uh, change the volts per division. You want to offset these a little bit we can you can see the two signals are basically identical now there are a lot of things we could do that would affect this this is actually quite a complex setup because there's several loops here first of all we're looking at a fairly fast rise time with these signals so fairly high frequency here we have a piece of coax typically with coax we're thinking that the current's traveling down the center conductor and then back through the ground well the problem is is that we have this shield and we're looking at something called skin effects what you can end up with is where current will travel down the inside part of the shield and then it can also come back on the outside part of the shield and it can actually radiate that power typically what you're going to do is put a ballon in there or in this case like what we're doing is stacking up a bunch of ferrite on a piece of coax. Basically what we're doing is increasing the impedance of the outside of the shield with this. Another thing we can do is perturb some of these loops. Here you can see I have these two pieces of coax. They are basically right on top of each other. Let me show you what happens as I start to spread these apart a little bit. You can see how the ratio on the scope changes. Look at this. So as I start to spread these out, you can see how the polarity is starting to change. All right, let me just remove our block of wood. This piece of coax is marked with yellow, and you can see it's now running to this common point, and it's wrapping around this side of the loop. Our other piece of coax is running around this side of the loop. So now we've changed the whole setup. But again, as we bring these two pieces of coax together, tighter I make them, of course we end up with the same signal again. Again, this is offset, but you can see they lay right on top of one another. Again, we'll spread them apart. So when you run a test like this, you have to be very clear about the setup. Just taking a couple of meters and attaching them and then having these long wires dangling out, it's going to make a huge effect on the results of this test. So that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. So until the next video, stay safe. Later.